Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and today I bring you 10 things that parents need to know about Pokemon Sun and Moon version. Now this is meant to be a quick and dirty guide to a lot of the frequently asked questions I hear from parents or just seeing online. If you have additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Now of course, the first thing that most parents need to know is that Pokemon does not promote animal cruelty. The game really places a supreme focus on bonds, partnerships, and friendship over all else. You do sometimes see the theme of the bad guys or the evil team using Pokemon as tools, but more often than not, those uh, themes are decried or overthrown or shown as being the negative impact of Pokemon. So. Don't worry about anything that you're seeing from, like, you might see things from PETA, for example, saying that Pokemon are being used as slaves. There's a lot of lore with Pokemon, and the thing at the front of it is that Pokemon are our partners. The second thing that most parents need to know is that the new 3DS is not needed to play. There are a lot of 3DS models. You, have, you can have a regular 3DS, a 3DS XL, a 2DS, a new 3DS, or a new 3DS XL. Any one of those will do for Pokemon Sun and Moon. Furthermore, Pokemon Sun and Moon will not have any specific 3D functionality outside of a camera mode, which is one specific mode in the game. Uh, so if you're worried about your younger children using the 3DS and harming their eyes, they took a lot of that functionality out of there, almost all of it. And uh, the only benefit to getting the new 3DS would be number one, if you have other games that require the new 3DS to play, or if you are concerned with the game running smoothly it might run a little bit more smoothly on the new 3ds number three connectivity a lot of parents are worried about their student or child's ability to connect with and talk to or message other players through video games uh, that's something you really don't have to worry about as much with nintendo products first of all with connectivity in pokemon games including sun and moon it's very, very well gated. You can't have direct connectivity with anyone unless they have your friend code. And even if you do exchange friend codes and add each other, each other as friends on the console, they there's no direct real way to message them. Uh, there is a voice chat uh, functionality, but it's not very good, honestly. And at any point, voice chat can be ended by either player. It's not even that they sign on for. There's no, there's no identifying information on there that your your son or daughter can put up in a profile. It's all just very general information like, what's your player name? What's your favorite book? What type of Pokemon do you like to use? And then it'll have things on your profile like the number of battles and trades and things like that you've done. Basically statistics for what you've done in game. Uh, there is the ability to post some messages as far as just a scrolling marquee of a message across your player screen if someone clicks on your face on the player screen. Uh, but those are limited to a few characters. And again, it's just one message that everyone sees. So uh, Nintendo has a check to block a lot of uh, adult language, profanity, um, or even things like sexual topics in the game. And that extends even to naming Pokemon. You don't really see Pokemon named anything that's more of an adult topic oriented either because Nintendo blocks things across many languages. So I can't even nickname a Pokemon something strange or inappropriate in another language. Uh, so things to keep in mind if you're worried about your child seeing uh, inappropriate things posted by other players. Now we've talked a lot about Sun and Moon version and that's what number four is. You don't have to have both versions to enjoy the game. For parents, the differences between the versions are number one, very slight story differences. The games technically take place 12 hours apart, and so that changes some of the characters I'm sure that you'll meet, some of the locales will look a little different. But the biggest change is that there are different Pokemon in each version. This is to encourage players to meet other players and to trade or to battle other players in order to see every Pokemon in the game. Uh, Nintendo has been really, really good about providing ways to obtain every Pokemon in the game without necessarily owning both versions. So a lot of people will get both versions, but you don't have to. So don't feel like that's something that you have to do. What age group is appropriate for playing Pokemon? Honestly, Pokemon has done a lot recently in the past, I'd say 
five or six Korg series games in order to make it more accessible for a wider audience. Uh, generally, the difficulty level is at the point if your child has reading comprehension and can read and understand words at any, almost at any level really, then they can play Pokemon and be successful and have a lot of fun with the game. Uh, in Sun and Moon in particular, they've added in several uh, notifications in the game to not only show you what's going to be more effective against certain types, but what Pokemon they need to catch in order to catch them all, or if they want to uh, avoid battling, things like that, it'll help kind of notify them in game as to what will be the proper step to take. So the difficulty curve here, if you can read, you can play. Uh, of course, there are competitive avenues on Pokemon, but that's really something completely different. And so here we're just talking about enjoying the core aspect of the game. All right, and in number six, you don't actually have to have Pokemon X version, Y version, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Red, Blue, Yellow, Pokemon Shuffle, Pokemon Battle Troze, Pokemon Rumble. All these games you do not have to have to fully enjoy Pokemon Sun and Moon. Pokemon Sun and Moon will be self-contained experiences that have connectivity to other games. Now, if you do already have versions that I've mentioned or pre-existing 3DS games, if you want to purchase Pokemon Box, which is a, a separate application for Pokemon for $5, then Pokemon Box will allow you to send Pokemon between games and have a lot more storage for Pokemon Online. If your child wants to store thousands and thousands of Pokemon instead of just having them all on each individual game. Um, but those aren't mandatory, is the point. If you have purchased Pokemon or Mega Ruby or Afro Sapphire, that's great to send those Pokemon to Sun and Moon after you've beaten Sun and Moon, but they won't impact the experience there at all. Uh, furthermore, the Pokemon animated show, the Pokemon anime, that's on TV, of course, or if you have Pokemon TV that's on your smartphone, that's separate from the game, and so is the trading card game. So if your child has any, um, pre-existing Pokemon merchandise and they want to know, oh, can I connect my game to the to the TV and do something special like I have seen in some TV shows before? Or is there any crossover with the trading card game or figurines like Skylanders or like Disney Infinity? The answer is no. So just kind of keep those things in mind. That way you can manage your, uh, your child's expectations and you aren't caught off guard by, okay, do I need to go get cards? Do I need to go get figurines to, to max this out? No, none of that's needed. The game is Truly just the game. Speaking of the game, Pokemon Sun and Moon is especially good to note that it's not for any specific gender. In fact, you will always have the option to choose between playing as a boy or a girl in the game. And I would even say that there are other facets in the game that show that, oh, there are different types of boys who enjoy different things or different types of girls who enjoy other things. So it's not very gender specific. You don't have to worry about it uh, reinforcing uh, gender roles that we've kind of come to expect and reinforce in society and things like that. So if you're a little bit more um, different in your views, or I guess progressive is the right way to say that, you don't have to worry about Pokemon reinforcing a lot of that because they actually do a really good job of keeping things very fluid and allowing players to arrive at their own basis or play the way that they want to play to see the outcomes that they want to see without punishing a certain play style or uh, without giving more options to boys versus girls or things like that. An additional good detail to mention is that Pokemon Go is not needed for Pokemon Sun and Moon. In the future, you will very likely be able to send your Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Sun and Moon, but most likely that will require Pokemon Box, which is that $5 application for the 3DS that I mentioned earlier. And even with that, that's the only functionality is sending Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Sun and Moon. I don't even believe that I've read any literature about being able to send them back. So. Uh, it is a nice feature just because, oh, that Pokemon that you've had in your, on your phone, if you want to continue your adventure with them in the game, you have that there. But again, separate experiences with a little bit of additional functionality. Pokemon Sun and Moon comes out in less than three weeks. Do you need to pre-order the game? Mm, the answer is probably no. Pokemon games usually have massive releases with the last couple of games selling millions of copies each, even on both versions. So with that, there are almost always plenty of versions, extra versions to buy because retailers want to make sure they have extra on hand. Now, pre-orders are good. If you want to get pre-order bonuses, for example, in the United States, 
pre-order bonus is usually a poster. Uh, in other territories, you will get in-game items or sometimes, if you're lucky, small figurines for pre-ordering one or both of the games. Uh, so you really have to do a little bit of research to see if it's worth in your territory pre-ordering it. But it is important to remember that if you pre-order it, that generally that money is gone. So for most people, it's better to just wait till the game releases and then go get it. Uh, but pre-order bonuses are nice. Normally you do have to pre-order things in order to pick them up at midnight releases as well, which there's a good chance that Pokemon will have a midnight release of sorts, depending on where you live. So that's something to check into as well. And finally, of course, I need everyone to remember that adults can and very probably will be playing Pokemon Sun and Moon. Uh, really, the game and a lot of the advertisements have been aimed at a little bit more old or rather more mature crowd, more like late teens, early 20-somethings crowd. And of course, the game is 20 years old too. Pokemon as a franchise has been out for 20 years. This is the 20th anniversary. So a lot of players that haven't touched the game since they played the first couple of games are likely going to be getting back into Pokemon Sun and Moon. So you will be seeing a lot of adults playing, which is good because you'll get a much more diverse player base. There's some chances for, for networking, making new friends there. That's all awesome. But just keep in mind uh, that people of all ages and all backgrounds will be playing the game. So don't be surprised when you um, see it. Uh, and in fact, older players are probably a little bit of a better way to get into playing competitively. So just things to keep in mind as far as uh, the player base of Pokemon goes.